How's German doing? The moon is close. It will be a long hunt tonight. If the beasts loom large and threaten to crush your spirits, seek a holy chalice. As every hunter before you has. A holy chalice will reveal the tomb of the gods where hunters partake in communion. So this is actually really important as well. Holy chalices lie deep within the tomb of the gods. And the few that found their way to the surface were lost again in the hands of men. But if the old hunter tales remain true, I didn't mean to do that. That was the wrong button press. Oh, God damn it. The tombs of the gods he's referring to in this game are... Oh, yeah, here we go. Red Messenger Ribbon. You guys, this. Look at him now. Terrifying. I'm sorry, German. Most of the holy chalices lie deep within the tomb of the gods. And the few that found their way to the surface were lost again in the hands of men. But if the old hunter tales remain true, one of the holy chalices is worshipped in the valley hamlet. Yet the town is in disarray. It was burned and abandoned for fear of the scourge. Home now only to beasts. The perfect place for a hunter, wouldn't you say? Now this is interesting because I don't know if he's talking about an actual place called uh, the Hamlet, or if he's talking about Old Yarnum, because Old Yarnum was also torched and shut off because of the scourge. What? I have a workshop tool, don't I? Oh. oh. Okay, blood gem fortifications. Yeah, but we don't have any. But what we can do first off is uh, repair our weapons, because every single time the weapons lose their uh, durability, they're gonna kind of do less and less damage over time. I kind of want to upgrade the axe because I really do like it. I don't think I want to waste stuff on the Kirk Hammer because it's really just a placeholder until I get my other trick weapon. So I think I'm actually going to focus on this one. I'll bring it up one point and I'll bring up my strength another. We are going a pretty heavy strength build in this. My goal is to just get good and not get hit. So we're not going to do vitality as much. Vitality and endurance are going to go up. Probably in our next couple levels here, I'll raise them. I'd like to talk to her. Time, countless hunters have visited this dream. The graves here stand in their memory. It all seems so long ago now. All right, this is going to be kind of like our next launch point. And here's the old crutchety lady. All right, lady. Christ, you're a grouch. What does this guy have to say? Be happy. Oh, the hunter. Thank you. To that old girl, you told her about this place, right? Well, she don't offer me much in the way of conversation, but still, I'd rather see her alive anyhow. Triumph. If you find any saints of art, send them a knock to Erden Chapel, will ya? <laughs> I love this dude. These guys are tricky, and they're also... I'd say one of the more interesting creatures you come up against because the way they look and the weapons that they use will change depending on the amount of insight we have, which once again is that eye in the top right corner. The whole world will actually change the more insight we have, which is really symbolic just in saying that. That insight will let you kind of see things more clearly. 
And that is going to be something that is kind of a pattern in this game. We're going to get into Blood Echoes, Blood and Insight a lot. Now here we want to be quick. They want to get out. Because that's a bad time. That's it for him. Okay, I can probably sneak around and hit this guy. I think Pitchfork dude might see me. Nope, doesn't look like it. He sees me now. Get it! I gotta get that health back. Oh, we got most of the back. Ah! 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 Well, at least he gave me blood vials. I, I think it's funny. You can tell when I'm playing a game that I really love because I don't shut up. A lot of other games, I really am kind of trying to figure out what's going on just as much as everyone else. But I find this game so easy to talk with. Uh oh. Oh. Because I'm just, I don't know, I'm passionate about it. I love this game. I don't know why. It's been years since I played this. Oh, I knew you were coming for me. You're a beast hunter, aren't you? I knew it. That's precisely how I started out. Oh, beg pardon. You may call me Alfred. Protégé of Master Ligarius. Hunter of vile bloods. So, what say you? Our prey might differ, but we are hunters, the both of us. Why not cooperate and discuss the things we've learned? Sure. Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Take this to celebrate our acquaintance. Ooh. Fire paper and pray. Best hunting is a sacred practice. May the good blood guide your way. There must be oodles for us to share. Go on. Just tell me what piques your interest. Oh, talk about the healing church. As you know, the healing church is the fountainhead of blood healing. Well, I'm a simple hunter, quite unfamiliar with the ins and outs of the institution. But I have heard that the holy medium of blood healing is venerated in the main cathedral. And that counselors of the old church reside in the high stratum of the cathedral ward. If you seek blood healing and the church is willing, you should pay them a visit. So that's a big deal right there too. So whatever this healing blood is, it's coming from deep within the healing church. Bergenworth is an old place of learning, and the tomb of the gods carved out below Yarnum should be familiar to every hunter. Well, once a group of young Bergenworth scholars discovered a holy medium deep within the tomb. This led to the founding of the healing church and the establishment of blood healing. In this sense, Everything sacred in Yarnum can be traced back to Bergenworth. But today, the college lies deep within a tangled wood, abandoned and decrepit. And furthermore, the healing church has declared Bergenworth forbidden ground. It's unclear how many of its scholars remain alive, but only they know the password that allows passage through the gate. And this is a big deal, too, because Bergenworth, like he said, the healing blood and all that wasn't really created until they found something in the tombs of the gods below Bergensworth or below Yarnum. When that happened, the church led an inquiry into what I it you'll we'll get more into it later. But they led an inquiry into what was down there and what they ended up finding created the healing of the what the, he created the blood ministration that you see now. And kind of that caused all this. And they won't let anyone near it. They protect it a lot. The highest members of the church stay in the top of the cathedral ward. Kind of protecting everything. I think initially they were fighting beasts with everyone else to try and, you know, stop whatever was spreading from spreading. But in the end, after losing the fight, they just ended up locking themselves in the upper levels of the cathedral ward. Now, I am going to go back up here because there's another way we can go. I believe it's a dead end, but it's still going to be free blood echoes. Well, not free, really. It's going to be blood echoes. What? What? 
He is a big boy. I'm gonna have to kill him. Oh my god. He is quick, even for his size. Oh, I got him. Parry! Like, parrying something that huge is crazy. Take that, big guy. I love this as well. So you see this guy and you go to take him out, but as soon as you start going over there, you're actually going to gain the attention of this big guy. He's going to come make your day really bad. Oh, I thought I got him. Hey, big guy. Got him. Where's that crow? I heard you over here. So I do think this game has, um... I do think this game has sweet spots on the weapons. Essentially, if I have my weapon like this, and I swing, and I hit someone with the handle, it won't do as much damage as if I connect with the blade. Which is just another thing I really like, because you have to get to know your weapons, you have to know how far back you have to be for your attacks to connect properly, and you gotta manage all that as well, and it can make everything a lot easier for you. I'm trying to keep my eye out for any more characters kind of tucked away, because you get do get to kind of talk and get to know some other side characters' stories, but if you don't talk to them in each location, you can completely lose that story for the rest of the game. I'm playing Bloodstone. My other weapon's strong attack would probably be better in this situation. Just because it's a downward strike. There we go. And that lantern I have, it's not doing a ton for me. The torch is definitely better. I really want to search this area because it's so dark. I just want to make sure nothing's going to drop on me from the ceilings. Well, there's just the one ceiling. <laughs> from the ceilings. Okay, what's near me? What's near me? I always assume when I come down a ladder like that, something's really eager to kill me. Ooh. Oh, I see a lantern. Okay, we'll go get that in a second. Antidote. I want to read these antidotes. Used to treat ashen blood, the baffling sickness that ravaged old Yarnum long ago. These tablets only provided short-term relief. The ashen blood ailment eventually triggered the spread of the beastly scourge. So ashen blood... Ashen blood triggered the outbreak of the scourge. That I'm going to have to read more about as we go through this. Because I didn't know that it was Ashen Blood. I thought it was something else. I thought it was like a curse or something. And I we haven't heard of Ashen Blood yet. I think that's the first time it's been mentioned. This town is no is long abandoned. Hunters not wanted here. This is Old Yarnum? Oh, it is Old Yarnum, so they locked up Old Yarnum. But then why, if it's full of beasts, why try and keep hunters out? Wouldn't that be kind of the place where you'd want hunters to be? You there, hunter. Didn't you see the warning? Where the hell are you? Turn back at once. Old Yarnum, burned and abandoned by men, is now home only to beasts. Now, this is actually important. So, as you can see, they torched this place. And it looks like they burned the beast al along with it. When the Scourge got out of hand, they just turned to burning the city and locking it down and just trying to forget about it. Not so much forget about it, I guess, as contain it. 
But one thing I love about that is, like it said, beasts, or quite a few beasts, have a fear of fire. Because that was like one of the main ways they used to cleanse the scourge. As a result though, when you're in this area, you're going to run into a new type of very creepy ass enemy. That looks just like a drop that would straight up kill me. Maybe I could make a jump to that other place, but that also kind of looks like... Yeah, that looks like I'm going to hit an invisible wall and not go anywhere and just die. Oh, these guys are quick too and brutal. Oh damn, I thought that one was dead. Well, they're dropping blood vials, so I guess they're not too, too bad. I like them. Hunter's Torch. Okay, so the Hunter's Torch is actually a pretty big deal. It's significantly stronger than the torch we've been using, and it actually becomes a pretty viable weapon against creatures that don't like fire. Like, you'd be surprised how much damage it actually does. Oh, so it just brings me right back up here. So maybe I was never supposed to go down there. Well, I mean, I could, obviously. Oh, the bridge. I didn't even notice it. I probably ran right by it. That's what I was talking about. See that? Because I have the torch out, he won't come near me. And they really do not like fire. Ooh. That's right. Ow. Well, that's how when you back him into a corner. I hear someone else approaching me. Damn, they ha they jump back. Maybe we should go with the long range. Now what's really interesting is that person talking to me told me that the beasts here are no threat to those above. So, he's protecting them? I wonder if he's... Well, he asked me if I saw the warning. I'm guessing he's the one who put the warning on the door before sealing the place up. Wow! That's some range to that. Couldn't take that one, though. 